Welcome. In this video, we will look at activities for introducing multiplication to third graders, as well as strategies for developing fluency with multiplication facts. There are several third grade strategies related to multiplication. In this video, we will dig into three. Standard OA1 introduces the concept of multiplication and asks students to see multiplication as the total number of objects in a given number of groups. Example, five groups of six objects. This builds off the idea that multiplication is a more efficient way to represent repeated addition. OA1 is only exploratory. It does not expect students to master facts at this time. Instead, they will just build groups with manipulatives and drawings. Standard OA5 asks students to apply the properties of operations to multiply and divide. As we will see later in this video, this goes a lot deeper than the identity property, zero property, and commutative property. It also gets into using multiplication strategies based on the distributive property. Lastly, standard OA7 asks students to fluently multiply and divide. The word fluent here means efficient, accurate, and within a reasonable amount of time. This means that students should be able to use efficient strategies to multiply until facts are committed to memory. If students are unable to remember a fact, they can then go back and rely on that familiar strategy. Today's video will only look at strategies for multiplication, not division. Typically, once a student knows their multiplication facts and he has the understanding that multiplication and division are related, they can use known multiplication facts to fluently divide. Please note that the standard asks that students fluently multiply and divide by the end of the school year. This means that teaching and practice will need to occur across the year after the standard has been introduced. When introducing multiplication, be sure to connect it to what students already know. Explain that it is a way to represent repeated addition when we are working with groups or sets of objects. When we solve multiplication or repeated addition problems, we can use skip counting. When recording multiplication equations, be sure to read the multiplication sign as groups of or sets of. Instead of saying 4 times 5, I would say 4 groups of 5. This will be especially useful when students get into 4th and 5th grade. When they start working with fractions, they will be used to saying 1 half of a group of 5 instead of 1 half times 5. Later in the year, we will start working with using multiplication to solve area problems. You can then read the problem as a 4 by 5 area. A good initial activity is for the class to be put into groups of three. Give each group a handful of counters, show them a fishbowl, and ask each group to place five counters into the bowl. Once all students have placed their counters, ask the class to predict how many total counters are in the bowl, and then have them share strategies. A possible student strategy might be, um, well, we had seven groups of students. They each put five counters into the bowl. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I skip counted. We have 35 counters. A teacher could then record this as a repeated addition equation. Then the teacher would pretend to be exhausted from recording this long equation and exclaim that there must be a faster way. Wait, there is. We could use multiplication. Explain that multiplication can be used when we're counting groups of objects. The teacher would then record 7 times 5 is equal to 35 and read it as 7 groups of 5 is equal to 35. Another beginning activity is the Marilyn Burns game Circle and Stars. Partners each get a recording sheet and two dice. Partner 1, in this case Amy, rolls a die and draws that many circles to represent that many groups. Here, she rolled a 3, so she's going to draw 3 circles for her 3 groups. Jack rolls a 2, he draws 2 circles for his 2 groups. Now, Amy rolls again to determine how many objects go into each group. She rolled 4, so she puts 4 stars, or you could decide on whatever shape, in each group. Jack rolls a 2, and he draws 2 stars in each group. Now, both students work to see how many total stars they have in their groups. Since multiplication is new at this point, the teacher should encourage students to record both a repeated addition equation and a multiplication equation. After three rounds, the student with the most stars wins. After completing the circle and stars game, the teacher should ask questions to address the math behind the game. For example, pretend your die has a zero on it. Your first roll is five and your second roll is zero. What would your circle and stars drawing look like now? What numbers did you represent in different ways? 
For example, Jack, you rolled a 2 at two different points. What did the 2 represent each time you rolled it? What observations can you make? What is the fewest total number of stars you can get in round 1? What is the greatest number of stars you can get in round 1? Now that students have had some exposure to the idea that multiplication means groups of or sets of, games can be played to reinforce this idea. For example, students could be given two spinners. They would spin, multiply, and color in the product. The goal would be to color three numbers in a row. Once students have an understanding of multiplication, they can start to learn strategies for developing fact fluency. Start with the basic facts that are easy to skip count, twos, fives, and tens. Here, students don't need to memorize a strategy. They should just know that skip counting is a helpful tool for retrieving facts. Next, introduce the zeros and ones facts. Since we've already introduced multiplication as repeated addition, we wouldn't want to start with the zero and one facts. There is no repeated addition involved when there is only one group of something or zero groups of something. Once students have mastered the basic facts, teach the facts that build on the basic facts. For example, your threes, so you would multiply by two and then add another group. Fours, you would double and then double again. Sixes, you would multiply by five and then add another group. And your nines, you would multiply by ten and then take away one group. We would hope that students eventually stop relying on these strategies and commit the facts to memory. However, we want students to know these strategies so that they have a means for accessing the product even when they cannot remember it. On the last slide, we saw some of the easier strategies that built on basic facts. Once those are mastered, teach the remaining strategies, which are a little bit trickier to use. So that would be the sevens, and here you would multiply your number by five, and then multiply your original number by two, and add the two products together. Your eights, you would multiply your number by four, and multiply your original number by four again, and add those two products together. Standard OA5 asks that we teach strategies based on the properties of operations in order to make multiplication and division easier. Many of the strategies that we should introduce to third graders are based on the distributive property, or the idea that a number can be decomposed into smaller numbers to make multiplication easier. For example, when multiplying 3 times 4, we can break the 4 into 2 and 2. Then we can double the 3 and then double it again. The other properties we will need to teach are also listed here on this screen. Please be sure to discuss all of these properties and how they can make learning the facts easier. I remember memorizing all of my facts in third grade. Nobody ever pointed out to me that 5 times 2 was the same as 2 times 5, which is the commutative property. If somebody would have just made this connection for me, I would have been able to learn half the facts. Remember, although we are teaching students strategies based on these properties, we do not need to actually teach the names of the properties. A good sequence for teaching fluency with multiplication facts would be to start by introducing the strategy. For example, this chart shows the strategy for multiplying by 4. Then, have the students practice skip counting by that given number. Here, a teacher gave students a set of cards for skip counting. If other strategies have been previously introduced, other sets of skip counting cards can be mixed into the pile. It is also helpful to give students a hundreds chart when teaching skip counting or multiplication. As students skip count or as they sell facts, they can highlight the numbers that they stated and notice the patterns. The teacher may also want to give students a multiplication chart to fill in the missing numbers. This way, students can rely on their memory, skip counting, or a strategy previously taught to complete the missing information. Once a strategy has been taught, make sure students have ample opportunities to practice. Copy, cover, compare is a great activity for fluency practice. Here, the teacher just finished teaching the strategy for multiplying by 3. For this strategy, students are encouraged to double the amount and add one more set. Since this strategy relates to the twos facts and, and threes facts, the teacher included both fact families on the copy cover compare sheet. Then, the teacher puts the sheet in a file folder with four flaps. Students look at the fact under the first flap, copy it under the third flap, and solve it. Students then check their work. If it's incorrect, there is a fourth flap for them to lift and practice again. Flashcards are also a great tool for practicing multiplication facts, but they should only be used once there has been some strategy instruction. One way to use flashcards is for the students to not only state the answer, but also state the strategy that can be used for finding that answer. 
To see a snapshot of a teacher using several of the tips mentioned in this video, please watch the remediation lesson in this YouTube playlist. Thanks and have a great day.